Hello and good evening. It's been a couple weeks, mostly because I was I was waiting out this week's various strip marketing stuff. You know, at first I thought we'd see the end of Jetburn and then this whole, you know, lizard showed up and all of that. But, you know, just means we have a lot to cover between Nats, some big stuff that came out before Nats, and then, you know, of course this week's news. So, first and foremost, NA Nationals was this past weekend, and it was won by... George Zhang playing Life Overhaul. I believe he is from the Chicago area. He's uh, plays at the same store that Chris Smith plays at. Apparently hasn't gotten out and traveled very much before this, so this is kind of our first time seeing him, and he, he ran the gauntlet and won the event, so congratulations to George on that. Fifteen other people also qualified for the HLC. Uh, too many to practically list here, honestly, but congratulations to everyone who did, of course, and for the rest of us, uh, there are going to be at least four last chance qualifier slots available on site on the Friday before the HLC in early February, the first weekend of February down there in Orlando. So you know, it's going to be a lot of people going into their bunkers and their playgroups, and there's not going to be a whole lot of big events between now and then. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, so that, that's a, it's going to be a weird one to see what shows up at the at the LCQs and at the HLC itself. Uh, still awaiting actual details on that event. They kind of false posted some stuff, I, I guess now two weeks early or something. They put something up, then said the dead stuff was incomplete, and then they took one of the articles down, and then they took the other article down a few hours later. And we don't really know what all of that was about, because there, there was information temporarily for a few hours, and uh, it's been like 10 days since then, and it hasn't resurfaced. So we don't really know what's going on with that, but... There is, in theory, HLC info coming soon because we've seen the shell of it exist, right? The article is mostly written. They're just maybe waiting until after this week's stuff to post it. But anyway, going back before Nationals, they, they posted a big article talking about the, the future of Universe's formats. This has been long awaited with the move into some different IPs. Obviously, they weren't going to be able to keep doing MHA only as their main format. You know, Long term, that was never going to be the case, and... You know, it's time for them to start shifting. So, in this article, you know, it'll be linked in the description along with, you know, plenty of other stuff. Go read it if you haven't. But they basically lay out a a, 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 a graph from sort of the simplest, most beginner-friendly formats to the more complicated ones. And you know, sort of in the middle are the ones that they might use for their major events. So, you have Sealed, of course, for, for pre-release events and... You're very easy, you don't have to worry about evaluating which cards you're taking in your draft or anything like that. You don't have to worry about symbols, you just sort of build a deck. Uh, the second format, which they describe as mostly for locals, uh, so and, and for side events maybe, I don't think we're going to see it as a... It doesn't sound like we're going to see it as like a main regional format or anything, but they, they're calling them spotlight formats. And this is currently your MHA block format, what they've been calling that. Basically any format where it's just, hey, it's this license and only this license, so... The cute thing there is that it opens them up to have like a cute Yu Yu Hakusho spotlight format side event where you can dip into that old set and have some maybe some dramatically different power levels, but you can maybe do some interesting decks with those two sets once the Dark Tournament comes out. Uh, but of course, most of the spotlight stuff you're going to see for a little while is going to be My Hero Academia spotlight. Maybe a cute Bebop spotlight if, if they're really feeling it <laughs> at, at some side event at some point. But those are going to exist. You're still going to be able to play them as your, your weekly store format if you so choose. The same way you can still technically play, you know, what used to be called standard you know, presently or, or formally, whatever. So some number of stores are probably going to do that. But I think the expectation is one, once these that start getting previewed and start coming out, um, most people are going to move into multi-IP, and, and you'll have a few groups out there that, that are really dedicated MHA spotlight groups. Uh, speaking of which, the, the sort of new main format, they're, they're going to call it standard, and it's going to be the standard format. Uh, I would expect this to be most organized play formats. You know, we'll see. They have a bunch of formats to support. Maybe they'll switch it up a bit, but standard is going to be pretty much any sets released in the current year as well as the previous two calendar years. So in 2023, it's anything from 2021, 2022, 2023. Once we get into 2044, specifically once the first booster set releases of the new year, it will rotate out the stuff from three calendar years ago. So once 
Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament comes out, the first MHA set will rotate out of standard and will be, we'll have from Crimson Rampage through Jetburn plus the Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament set and the Challenger decks that, that will have come out between now and then. And, and so that's sort of how the standard format's going to work. It is going to be based on set symbol and of sort of that set symbol's original release window. You know, if they print a promo three years later with the MHA set one you know, watermark icon in the lower left corner, it's still going to rotate with the rest of MHA one. Uh, the same thing presumably goes for those retro promos they printed that has the icon of some demo decks that came out in 2020. Um, a couple cases that they still haven't technically clarified yet, but you know, we'll presumably get more information on that as, as we get closer to that being uh, an actual format that there are events for. Right now, it's sort of this future thing that won't de facto isn't going to exist for any practical purpose until those challenger decks come out in January. So they've got a few months to you know, nail down those details and communicate them to us. Uh, they also called out draft as a format and this is a format that could possibly be a format for a premier event, a regional or something at some point, which is kind of surprising, but we have seen that they've tried to make Jetburn more draft friendly and maybe that's going to continue into future sets. Uh, you know, this game's draft scene, there, there isn't one. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's not something that people really do more than like as their third pre-release or something or at their release tournaments when they've already done sealed. So it'll be interesting to see if they, they're, they're going to try to push that as a format for more than just like side events and, and really see if they can get people playing draft and see what people think of it and maybe take it from there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a draft regional or two this year, uh, if they're going to do some formats that aren't standard. But I, I would be surprised in the general sense because... Um, there, there has, has, there's no particular indication that draft is going to be a successful format, but if they're going to try to make it one, then they might try to, you know, leverage a regional or two to that end, right? And then, of course, they call it retro as sort of the maximum complexity format, which, you know, it is, and probably won't be a main event format at any point, but, you know, could continue to show up as a big side event format. Uh, they did fill out, like, 100 plus people for retro at... And in Nationals, now granted, everyone was kind of already there uh, and, and getting there a day early and whatever, but they did get some people playing it, and I don't know if I would describe it as healthy. Uh, it, it, there were a lot of pet decks <laughs> going around, right? Not necessarily... You know, some people think their pet deck, you know, are playing their pet decks that they think are Stone Cold Killers, and some people are just playing their pet decks, right? Uh, there weren't too many people being like, you know, I'm going to build the most busted thing I can, so much as it's just building their favorite stuff, right? But it doesn't necessarily, you know, maybe nobody ever will, right? If it's always a side event and it's just kind of a fun format that people play, right? That, that would be kind of nice, but we'll see. We'll see what they keep doing with that one. But yeah, so those are the five formats. Expect, I, I'm personally expecting mostly standard going forward. But you know, we won't know until they announce their 2024 organized play plans in detail, which uh, was you know, cited as as soon as in like actually soon. But it is start that was you know two weeks or so or something now, so it's starting to turn into soon TM. <laughs> but you know may maybe we will get that you know perhaps before Jetburn comes out or something like that or shortly afterwards. And then moving on to this week, the the big big news this week is that. We have Godzilla. Uh, in particular, the Godzilla Minus One movie that is uh, premiering on December 3rd, I think, or something like that. They're having a quote-unquote Godzilla Day, you know, sort of mass different medias and, and websites, whatever, promotion on November 3rd. So as part of that, TCG Player is in on this and Universus is in on this. And on November 3rd, anyone who spends $75 from... The U.S., I put N.A. only on here, but it is U.S. only. Anyone from the U.S. that spends $75 on TCG Player is going to get this Godzilla minus one promo character. Uh, or at least the first 7,500 people that do. And this is basically any $75 you spend. There might be some exceptions like gift cards or something, but people from other games spending $75 on their Yu-Gi-Oh cards or whatever are going to get a Godzilla in the mail. So, you know, as a while supplies last, I don't know, you know, TCG players order volume, how quickly or not quickly $7,500 promos are going to go. Because it is it is only for people who spend $75 or more. People who are just getting their $10 singles aren't going to get one, right? 
but I would, if you really, really want to go after this, I would try to get in on it, you know, in the morning, just in case. It's going to start at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. It's not going to run literally all day. It's going to, the, the end point, if they haven't gone through all 7,500 cards, is 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern or something like that. I didn't, I don't remember the exact number, but link in the description to all the details. I'm linking to the UVS Games article, and that's going to link out to the TCG Player articles, which as linked to terms of service. It's limit one per customer. Uh, so, you know, stores and whatnot don't get to like, cheese it and buy from themselves or whatever right or anything like that and you know uh, i'll shout out i'm pretty sure rochester ccg is going to be trying to do something for this they do have a tcg player store so so they might keep an eye on the socials uh, we might see sean announce some sort of special deal for people that choose to spend their 75 dollars in such a way that they're buying from the rochester ccg tcg player store so keep an eye out for that um, besides all those big items, we also had, you know, various odds and ends showing up. So they did show off the Chromes at Nationals and over the Nationals weekend. There's a, a pretty cool little reveal video too on the socials, so I've linked to that. We're still working on getting the last Jetburn previews. We are now down to four missing cards that are going to be shown off this coming Wednesday at the Webcam Wednesday Weekly. I would not be surprised if they saved some really silly stuff for last. I will see what they have up their sleeves, but we're still waiting to see those. This is going to be kind of the latest that a preview season has ended before a set's release, so, so it's a little off-putting. Uh, not not off-putting, in, in, but it, it, it's different, right? We're, we're used to having the cards much sooner before a set comes out. And you know, for better or for worse, we're, we're still missing some here, but... Uh, those we'll finally have soon, and then we we wait to see uh, the the plus ultra cards, which we've seen some of on a poster that's shown up in some stores, but they haven't formally previewed the plus ultra cards. So I would guess that you know next week we're going to the last four jet burn cards, and then maybe the week after they'll they'll start previewing the plus ultras leading up to the set release. Uh, we also got to see on some distributor websites and you know some other places we got the MSRP for the challenger decks that are coming out January nineteenth. That's going to be $35 per deck, uh, which sounds high, but I'll, I'll remind first of all that this is the MSRP and most stores sell at, you know, 80, 90% of MSRP. So probably de facto, it's going to be $30 in most places you would buy these, which is still feels like a bunch for a, a 60 card deck, but it also comes with the, the collector's pack with six special alt art, alt foil treatments of cards. And depending on... The nature of those and how many different ones there are and how collectible valuable they are etc this could turn out to be a pretty good deal uh we still have we have stuff that we see the exact nature of what these collector packs are like but uh you do figure you know 30 dollars per deck probably gonna need two of each but you know they're 60 card decks they're not 50 card decks uh you get those extra packs in them so you know just fyi you know i think people were hoping for a little bit less than this but i don't think I don't think it was going to be too much less realistically. But anyway, the MSRP number is $35. We also have a peek at some new playmats that are coming out. You know, also some from distributor sites, some from there's a wave on Jasco's of uh, Jasco UBS Games official shop now as well. So the ones that are up on the shop now are uh, Undaunted Raid themed. There's an Overhaul and a and a Nejire and a Mirio. And I forget what the fourth one is, but it's another Undaunted Raid one. And then for the for the Jet Burn ones, it looks like there's three. It looks like there's going to be a Deku, a Toga, and an Ochako. And, you know, these playmats are continuing to look pretty nice. There's some complaints about the logo being sort of very large and loud on some of them. But on the ones where it kind of fits into the color scheme, it looks pretty good. Uh, so if you like buying playmats, you need to check those out. They've been having a few playmats with each set, you know, in those tall boxes, and you'll see them in your stores most likely. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested. The last thing I just want to call out here, it, because it stood out to me and it was weird. In the format split article, they, they dropped a random Sonic Boom reference. And uh, Sonic Boom is an attack from Street Fighter. And I don't know if this, you know, they, they tease stuff a lot, but they, they've sort of been consistently talking about fighting games, and they've 
I believe they've brought up Street Fighter a couple of times now, and it's a little weird that they're not bringing up Mortal Kombat very often, or at least as often as they, they talk about Street Fighter in passing and whatnot, so you just more drops in the bucket if people are pining for a Street Fighter IP that you know, only seems more and more likely as they keep saying things like this, but you know, just because if they just wanted to reference some other IP that they had, they had other IPs and other fighting game IPs that were more recent than the Street Fighter set, right? But anyway, ju just me speculating in any case. Uh, and then last thing I want to talk about is, you know, we don't have any official events on the calendar between now and the start of February. Uh, and this was really a big problem last year when this happened. It, kind of the same thing happened a year ago, and uh, it, it was really a, a bit of a drag on the player base on top of Heroes Clash being what it was, right? So, you know, we're seeing some, you know, community members and, and groups trying to formulate some events. So I want to call those out here and try to get them a little bit more attention. The King's Court from Massachusetts is going to be running a webcam event on January 6th. They're calling it like Monarch Money Matches or something like that to play on the MMM theme. But it, it is a webcam event. It is going to be $10 entry. All of the entries are going to go directly into the prize pool. So they're not really going to make or lose any money on this pretty much. If 100 people show up and pay $10, it's going to be a $1,000 prize pool. If 20 people show up and pay $10, then it's going to be $200 prize pool. Uh, so call that out. Uh, I'll post a link to the little poster image they have sort of advertising it in the description. And also, also see, it sounds like Tam Cardwell is at least exploring this idea. He dropped a little poll on his Discord asking, you know, if people would show up on such and such a date uh, for a webcam tournament. So keep an eye out for that. And I know a couple other you know, content creation community members have talked about, you know, oh, maybe I'll put something together. So, you know, try to keep an eye out you know, on the socials and I'll try to keep track of them here as well for anything like that that might be happening as as we get through the winter here. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to cover for today. Um you know, obviously a bunch going on. It, it's you know kind of mixed news, right? I, I think the the format split is, you know, was going to happen. There's some people that are scared about you know, what Magic does with sort of every three months they only care about one format, and hopefully that doesn't happen here. You know, hopefully the, it, the standard format is truly the standard, and then the other formats get, you know, maybe some attention here and there, but it's still mostly standard. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Um, the Godzilla minus one promo. It, it is a mechanically unique character. Granted, it's not a super strong one. Um, but that that's going to be a thing for a little while. We'll see what the aftermarket prices on those are. I, there's going to be a lot of them going to people that don't play universes, which is a good thing for marketing. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what those end up being priced at when, when they show up on the secondary, right? Um, otherwise, you know, just a bunch of product news. And yeah, we're going to wait on the rest of Jetburn and the Plus Ultra cards, and we're waiting on HLC details and 2024 organized play which they've said we be, should be getting pretty soon so stay tuned should continue to be pretty busy on the news front for the next few weeks here and we'll see what comes down the road all right have a good night take care